A cruise ship off the coast of San Francisco will dock today and passengers infected or exposed to the coronavirus will disembark. And federal officials say some of those passengers will be quarantined here in San Antonio. In a time of modern reading where we have Kindles and iPads, you don't see a lot of local bookstores opening. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. In just a bit, we talk to the store owner who talks about how opening a book can still be a magical experience. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 64 degrees to start. So many people spring break. We're going to check in with our Mike Osterhage in just a few moments. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Monday, March 9th. It is spring break for so many people, and for a lot of other people, they're still trying to catch up on that sleep. Oh, my goodness, yes. That, change, that uh, clock change really gets you the first week when you have to get up. But mm. I'm glad to have you here with me this morning. I am honored. It is a pleasure. He's yeah. in the best mood, too. I'm it's like, a great day. It, it, good to be young, right? It is. Well, I had all weekend <laughs> to catch up on sleep. You work weekends, though. Yeah, but I'm ready. I'm already time adjusted. Oh, he's already time adjusted. Okay. Okay, then. Anyway, <laughs> for you. Uh, you do have to watch out for a little bit of rain as you're hitting the roads this morning if, if you do work during this spring break. And it does look like that there's uh, the shine, the sheen off the road right there. It looks like there may have been a little bit of rain over by the airport. If you were just to uh, send in a picture, it said that there's some light rain by Ingram Park Mall this morning. And here's what's going on. This is ground clutter right here. And then we've got these showers that move on through here. Everything's sliding up to the northeast at a fairly decent clip. A few more of these showers, even a a decent shower is coming in on the uh, southwest side of town. Everything's sliding up again to the northeast, and all this extends back down through western parts of the hill country, Hondo, Uvalde, Eagle Pass, and over across the river into Mexico. So all this will continue to slide across here throughout basically the morning. I think we have better rain chances this morning, and then still some showers around this afternoon, but not quite quite as widespread, a little fewer further between 64 here in town. Very steady temperatures all around. We're about 15 degrees above normal thanks to the cloud cover, thanks to all the, the higher humidity around here. And temperatures may fluctuate a degree when it's all said and done, but basically we stay about where we are right now. We'll make it up to 70 at noon. Still a few showers around here and one or two showers later on this afternoon and a high temperature up to 74. Now we are going to start to warm up going into the middle part of the week. High temperature right around 80. Then another front's going to move down through here. It's not going to be a huge blast of cold air. It'll kind of take us back down on the other side of normal, but also more rain chances to finish up the week and go into the weekend. Details on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo and I see right in the middle of the map. Now we've cleared up those other two accidents in the area of Highway 90 and 410, uh, but we're also seeing, and I'll show that in just a minute, we're also seeing what looks like could be some damp roads, uh, very visible on the access road of 10 and Days of Allah. Okay. Main lanes, not so much, but we have a lot more activity on the main lanes. Right now, let's take a look. This is the accident right now. If you're in the downtown area, you usually use that Martin Street entrance ramp to westbound I-10 to head back out towards Crossroads. Right there is where we have this two vehicle accident, as you see right there. So this would be that entrance ramp from Martin here at the bottom or more to the right of your screen. This is the entrance ramp from northbound 35 and right there in between those two, those uh, vehicles did pull off to the side. Now you are required to move the vehicles off the roadway. So if you can move them, it's best just to completely move them off the highway. It's a lot safer that way. And if we can switch to Trans Guide 2, we can show folks that uh, uh, slick roads out there. It could be slick roads. I-10 and Days of Allah. Take a look at the access road. Access road started to get a lot more uh, sheen to the roadway. Also looks a lot darker. Up on the main lanes, like I said, a lot more activity. Vehicles moving faster, so it seems to be drying out faster. But those turns and curves, like that turnaround right there, you want to slow down well ahead of those areas this morning. Max, let's Thank you, Officer Trujillo. This morning, we are waiting to learn exactly how many passengers from an infected cruise ship will be coming to San Antonio. Federal health officials confirm JBSA Lackland will hold passengers from a cruise ship off the coast of San Francisco, but they haven't said how many. JBSA Lackland officials say only passengers who do not show symptoms will be taken to the military base for testing and a 14-day quarantine. Of course, we'll follow this story all day, so stay tuned to our later newscasts, and you can always get the latest on KSAT.com. And the cruise ship that is docking today is carrying 3,500 people, the passengers and crew. Well, they've been in limbo for days now as they await the results of their coronavirus testing. There are 21 confirmed cases on board, and, and now they have a plan to treat the sick and limit the spread. CNN's Nadia Romero has more from San Francisco. 
We are waiting the arrival of that Grand Princess cruise ship sometime today here at the port of Oakland. So here's what happens for those passengers. Those who are sick or very ill will be transported to area hospitals. Other passengers will be quarantined either in military bases here in California or in other states. Crew members will remain on the ship and that quarantine time period is 14 days. We will arrive at some time on Monday. Thank God. With the coronavirus on board, this Grand Princess cruise ship in the San Francisco Bay, passengers want off. The cruise ship captain telling passengers disembarkment may take several days. Some rush to the hospital, others sent to quarantine. As the mayor of Oakland, I have three priorities right now. First and foremost is to ensure the safety and health of my community. Shop owners in San Francisco's famed Chinatown point to coronavirus fears causing bare streets. People are simply staying away. We brought it with us. Jessica and Patty Clark didn't let the coronavirus stop their annual mother-daughter trip. We made sure we brought hand sanitizer. We've been much more aware of washing our hands and what we're touching and not touching our face. But it's relatively empty at San Francisco's iconic Fisherman's Wharf. We're open every day at 8 o'clock. This bike tour business taking extra precautions. We do clean them normally, but they are even more clean right now, ready for action. After several decades in business, Blazing Saddles, along with the other shops on the wharf, plan to weather the coronavirus storm. Restaurants, um, bus tours, bike tours, all of the above. Um, hopefully it turns around. You know, because a lot of people's jobs and lives are at stakes. Some of those passengers on the cruise ship are also from 54 different countries. So the governor of California says he's negotiating with their home countries to get them private chartered flights to go home. In all, there are about 500 confirmed coronavirus cases across the U.S., including 22 deaths. In Oakland, California, I'm Nadia Romero reporting. New this morning, a woman facing charges after police say she assaulted her elderly roommate. Now, take a look. This is 39-year-old Alicia Jimenez. According to an arrest affidavit, she hit the elderly man with her car while he was walking on the sidewalk. Allegedly, she then took him back to the house and beat him with a beer can while she tied him to a chair. Arrest records read that Jimenez then pointed a gun at him during an argument. Our Katrina Weber will have much more details on the story in our next half hour. Well, the owners of a restaurant just south of downtown will need to clean up after a small fire this morning. Firefighters responded to the fire at 215 at the Pizza Plus, which is in the 2700 block of South Presso. They say the grease trap caught fire, spread to the vent. Firefighters got in through the back of the building. They did put it out quickly. No one was injured. And in your morning headlines, former Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Bernie Sanders campaigning today in the final day before another huge primary election day. Biden has events set in Michigan, while Senator Sanders holding an event in Missouri. Now, there are six states voting tomorrow. Those include Idaho, Michigan, Missouri, Mississippi, North Dakota, and Washington State. Michigan has the most delegates to win in the Democratic primary. For tomorrow, that is with 125. Many people looking at the state as a testing ground for the 2020 general election. In our next half hour, we are going to break down who is endorsing each candidate ahead of tomorrow's important primary election day. Well, some leading voices in Nashville music are participating in a benefit concert to help the victims of last week's tornadoes. At least 25 people died in the storms and thousands more without homes after the tornadoes touched down in downtown Nashville. The proceeds from the concert will benefit local tornado relief and mental health organizations. Some of the musicians include Cheryl Crow, Dan Auerbach, and Ashley McBride. And earlier this morning, Pope Francis live streaming his daily mass, which was the first time in the Vatican's history. Now, the Pope decided to stream the mass out of solidarity for those people suffering from the coronavirus. Now, this comes after the Pope decided against giving his public blessing out of the window above St. Peter's Square, discouraging crowds from gathering in Italy. It comes as most of northern Italy is shut down over fears of the coronavirus outbreak. With new technology, some may wonder if physical books are a thing of the past. I really hope not. Mm -mm. But New York Times bestselling author Jenny Lawson, she agrees with us. She doesn't think so. It's why she is opening a bookstore that includes a bar right in the heart of Alamo Heights this spring. Sarah Costa spoke with Lawson about her store, Nowhere Bookshop, and why she says books are still magical, even in a digital age. I've just always wanted to have sort of a magical, weird place that I could go to 
and escape. Jenny Lawson is a three time New York Times bestselling author. She is opening Nowhere Bookshop off of Broadway in Alamo Heights that also includes a beer and wine bar this spring. She understands competing with big online corporations and digital books is challenging and isn't why she is opening her store. I definitely did not want to start a bookstore to make money, uh, which is a really good thing because I'm not quite sure that they do make money. Um, but I have always felt like bookstores are a sanctuary. A sanctuary and safe place for people who want to get lost in books. Lawson says she came up with the name Nowhere Books because as a child, she'd be able to travel anywhere out of nowhere by just opening a book. When you go to a bookstore, it's like going to a travel agent and they say like, where do you want to go? Lawson says she believes physical books are still important and should be cherished even more so in the digital age we live in. But there's something about the physical weight of a book that is grounding. It's a way of looking into other people's heads and um, creating empathy in a way that that I don't necessarily I think that we that we do today. You can connect with books and authors not only at Lawson store when it opens this spring, but also at the 8th annual San Antonio Book Festival on April 4th. The festival will be held downtown next to the Central Library and the Southwest School of Art. You can find more information on Nowhere Bookshop and the Book Festival on KSAT.com. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News.